<laughs> well, hello, hello, and welcome, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, wherever in the world you are right now. Uh, it's time for the Hotelcast TV, and we are pretty excited over here to, to get this started. Uh, welcome. Uh, please let us know from where you're watching from. would be really cool to see uh, where you are right now. As you can see, I already have two guests with me here, James and Enzo, and uh, we'll introduce them uh, right away. But just before that, let me just tell you if it's your first time here. Uh, this is the Hotelcast TV, and it's uh, the webinar series sponsored by Ask Suite. Uh, the world leader in smart service platform for hotels and resorts focus on double direct bookings. And guys, we also have the Hotel Pass podcasts uh, where, that you can find in our blog, asksuite.com slash blog or on Spotify. And there we also have interviews, exclusive interviews with hotel, hotel experts. And I'm going to give you a spoiler alert now. Uh, our next uh, episode is with Jeremy Nichols who is the Florida's top hospitality headhunter. So I think this is a great time to listen to a podcast uh, about recruitment in the hotel industry. If you're looking for a job or if you know anyone that is looking for a job right now, this is definitely the podcast you should listen to. But anyway, today it's about hotel distribution. And it's, uh, like I said, I have two global experts uh, with me here how lucky am i right so uh let's get this started uh first of all welcome welcome enzo uh thank for the, uh, and thank you so much for being here thank, thank you darling thanks for inviting me actually it's a very exciting to sit in a different uh, role today as you know i'm running you know to a webinar live streaming this kind of you know uh uh, broadcast stuff and uh, sitting as a guest speaker sometimes is much better. I have less stress, less responsibility, and uh, I can have fun. So, good afternoon, everyone. I'm uh, Enzo, uh, business developer of uh, Hyperguest, and I'm sitting here in Barcelona. I'm Italian, but I live in Barcelona since the last five, four, five, four and a half year. And I'm really happy to contribute today to share some tips best practice about distribution and uh thanks paula for inviting me well uh, you said that it's easier to be a guest let well i disagree because i did only one interview in my life and i was so nervous so <laughs> i think i prefer to be a host <laughs> yeah, it's all about practicing you know when you are sitting uh, on a director's side you have to manage the dashboard you have to ensure everybody are connecting and there is no technical issue, the audio, the video, people asking questions. So there's a lot of, you know, tasks you have to manage. And at the end yeah. of the day, uh, if the audience was not enough, uh, was not big, was not happy, you are the responsible, I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you for that. <laughs> no pleasure at all. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, we also have James Bishop here uh, with us. James, thank you so much too for, for joining us today. And yeah, introduce yourself to, to the audience. Yeah, well, welcome. Uh, thanks so much uh, for, for inviting me along. So, as, as Paula mentioned, I'm James Bishop. I uh, am the Senior Director for Global Demand Partnerships at SiteMinder. So, SiteMinder is one of the world's leading guest or online guest acquisition platforms. Uh, typically, probably most known for uh, channel management, but obviously, you know, we're Servicing all parts of the online guest acquisition, including direct bookings, GDS, and and uh, meta search, and so on. So, yeah, really happy to be sitting here on this side. Um, it's not often I'm, I'm sitting on this side with Enzo. He's usually in your chair, but I'm quite happy that you're driving today. And um, yeah, really, really pleased to be invited along. Ah, great. Uh, well, before already saying hello here, so hello to Poland, uh, Canada. Thank you all for joining us. And I guess it's my my turn to just, well, at least say my name because it's rude, right? Not say it. So yeah, my name is Paula and I'm a content manager here at Ask Suite. And well, I basically, I 
I write on the street blogs, I do podcasts and webinars, and I try to get the best information out there for hoteliers around the world. So yeah, so I guess that's it. So we all know each other now, and I think we can get down to business, right? Because everybody is dying yep. for uh, uh, tips and, and more knowledge on the hotel distribution uh, game, because, well, like everything else in the hotel industry, it, it changed, right? It, uh, well, nothing is like it was before, and especially uh, hotel distribution. So, uh, well, as we all know, uh, the demand, the hotel demand is too low. Uh, it kind of depends a little bit on where in the world you are, but overall, it's the travel industry is not blooming. It's not like really good. So any reservations, uh, any possibility, any chance of reservations, there are out there hotels are desperately trying to to grab and i think you too uh can uh, for sure help them in this uh this quest this very difficult quest uh so let's start about the let's start let's start talking about the basics i think which is customer co acquisition cost right and it's a topic that both of you uh knows very well uh, we do talk a lot about how to get more bookings, but not sure if every hotel uh, knows how much it costs and uh, how much it costs in different channels as well, if they have that on their radar. So uh, Enzo, I think you could you could start uh, enlightening us about this uh, customer acquisition cost in the hotel industry, please. Yeah, yeah of course, right. So. First of all, uh, we, we all know this is a very, not very good period. I'm not here to share suggests on how to behave, you know, in this uh, current industry scenario. Uh, the situation is not that great. But mm, mm, at some point, we have to look uh, at the glass and you, you, the people can decide if they want to look at the glass uh, half empty or half full. Uh, I always try to see it in a positive, you know, side uh i know i'm not sitting in an hotelier uh lounge now and uh feeling the right you know in the in the problem they are they are facing right now but at some point you have to you have to you have to fight and find a way to to take some positive advantage of this situation and uh when i'm talking every day with hotels really i talk every day with hotels with any dimensions of big the small hoteliers you know independent chain I think right now, or I'll, or I'll, you know, um, at the same at the same point where you have two 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 options right now. So first, look at your tech stack. Of course, uh, a lot of hotels are not, you know, really uh, for some reason updated from the point of your technology, the way they integrated each tools they are currently using, you know, on a daily basis. I don't know PMS, Channel Manager, Booking Engine, uh, RMS, and stuff like that. But I think now. Due to the low occupancy, uh, you're less busy. You have to focus and spend more time on how to build and improve, you know, your tech stack. And in the other hand, uh, how to set up the right strategy from now moving forward, of course. And we all know that in the last few years, especially top destination, top country, where the the, the percentage of customer, the traveler, is growing year over year. It, for some reason, you know, hoteliers that they did not have the right time to take right decision and set up the right strategy, optimize the revenue and stuff like that. So now is the moment to sit down and look at the way you've been, you know, selling the rooms, um, how to make processes so far and where you want to go in the next, you know. So, and one of the key aspects I always talk about, and I don't have a, a huge background in revenue, but I've been dealing in the revenue space for quite long. And um, one a particular aspect, which is completely in the other side of the price management, is the way you want to distribute the rooms. Because we all know that so far the common you know approach was always been like first come first serve. I put my rooms there. The first coming, the first take the room. When the room are done, I close my availability, which is okay. But we all know that if uh, we keep using you know the same approach of first come first serve. The large, you know, players are the, are the fastest one. They always are able to finish, you know, your inventory in a very quick way. 
and at the end of the day they are always the same players which are increasing year over year the cost of uh, distribution so i'm not complaining about that but you know that's the moment right now to sit and see do we want to continue to sustain this way the distribution do we want to you know keep selling the same way we've been doing so far i think right now is the moment to sit and think and strategize in a better way by starting all not only from the you know um the price you know management point of view which is the common and fastest way to manage the demand but also to be able to balance the way you want to sell those rooms okay yeah by starting to the from a kpi which is a very important the cost of acquisition uh, of your travel so if i can share this this slide just to give you know a list of some idea i'm gonna give you a couple of tips okay right so basically yeah. it's easy but let's start from the point that calculating the customer acquisition cost is very easy you have to summarize total marketing expense plus total ex sales expense and divide them by the number of customer acquired so in this way you know exactly how much you cost how much you have as a cost to acquire any customer yeah. but of course if we look at the scenario out there we we can you know the the divide and segment the distribution by look at some you know traditional way and some new opportunity we know that the average cost of ota is 20 percent in some case less some case more and then we have another scenario which is the largest you know the highest cost from my point of view is the wholesaler which we know that the average cost goes between 20 30 percent and that's depend also on the type of agreement you have with them and then there are new way now that are coming on the market to sell your rooms for example google paper state uh i'm highlighting here some player that providing a very good services for that which is mirai is a, a spanish company that operate globally or yeah. some alternative like for example the company I'm representing but i'm not here to talk about my company yeah. this is <laughs> of, uh, of what i mean when you have to redesign the way you distribute distribute your rooms and if I can share some tips, for example, first step you should do is accurately verify the commission of fixed costs of each channel you are using right now. Then compare the production of each individual channel to understand in detail the participation of each of them in the total revenue, respecting the total revenue. Then if the point two appears that most of the sales are concentrated in a few high cost channel, for example, large OTA, wholesaler, GDS, for example, make sure to better balance your inventory by helping channel with lower productivity that have a lower intermediation cost by switching some of your rooms also in that in that basket. So you don't if you don't you know give smaller ones more opportunity, you will never be able to become independent from uh, you know from the big distributor who will continue to keep commission cost unsustainable now more than yesterday so we know that now every cent of your dollar is is making you know the difference yeah. and another suggestion i would like to give is look at the national you know um, distribution channel we all know that now most of the tourism is moving mostly domestic and uh, there's plenty of you know old fashioned uh, website and a portal that you know are still very uh, very used used by local travelers by moving a local way so really you know start to open again your uh, distribution pattern don't look always at the same player open the opportunity to smaller one and uh, again try to understand how much you're spending to acquire your customer by going in each of your current channels and trying to switch some of your inventory in a way that the expensive one are not selling faster than the other so you will never have you know enough uh, uh, inventory to to distribute across other channels so that's that's basically the sense of uh, of uh, you know uh reducing the way you are you are um, you are investing and pay your customer acquisition by mm -hmm. redesigning you know the inventory distribution well that Enzo. that's uh, very great valuable tips uh, and the very uh enlightening for sure and james enzo mentioned that and i, I totally agree and i want to know your opinion uh sometimes uh, hoteliers just keep doing things the way they do because you know they they just keep doing it they don't think about 
what they are actually doing, where are they putting their money, and it says, oh, okay, just keep doing the same strategy over and over and over. And yeah, I do think that this is a time, if it's definitely the time to rethink about uh, strategies in any aspect, including hotel distribution. So uh, what is your thought about that and uh, the, the cost of a guest, uh, of course? Look, I, I think right now, if we're talking about hoteliers in the scenario we're in right now, um, yeah, of course, cost of acquisition, cost of the, the customer is, is going to be very important because, you know, there is pressure for rates to be decreased. Like people are chasing after limited demand that's in the market. So, so you know, there, there, there is a habit to maybe get into price war. Um, but at the end of the day, so as those rates come down, obviously, you know, the percentage that you're paying for that customer is basically increasing, so it doesn't go down at the same rate. Uh, you know, your marketing costs are very similar. Um, and, you know, there, there, there's still plenty of supply in the market as as uh, as hotel rooms, but of course, you know, the, the travel, the, the demand is limited very much to the domestic and who can actually travel and work in those regions, plus the business travel is pretty much non-existent at the moment. Uh, from a corporate perspective, they're not really allowing employees to travel. So, um, you know, really hoteliers are, are, are probably more in the frame of mind of just fill my rooms, uh, no matter the cost. I and mean, it's very easy to get stuck down that road. Um, I wouldn't agree necessarily 100% that this is the time that everybody should switch up their strategy and try and um, you know, spread their inventory across additional channels. I agree they should be working with additional channels at this point, and there will be channels they weren't working with previously that would be adding more value today because they're a lot more focused on domestic travel or they uh, attract a different type of guests that the hotel wasn't previously focused on because they were very business orientated, for example, which is now dried up. So certainly, you know, there there is the ability to go and expand your distribution. But in terms of shifting inventory between channels, um, you know, there, there's a risk there that you lose your visibility in the channels, which, as we know, are taking up the vast majority of the market. Uh, the vast majority of hotels that are using a tech stack, like a, a channel manager to distribute their rooms, are doing so on a pooled inventory anyway. So it's not like you have to make a decision. I've got 100 rooms to sell. Do I put 50 here, 20 here, 30 here? You know, it's a pool, as you say, first come, first serve. Um, it's about ensuring you're working with all of those other channels, not just connecting to them, but understanding how you can get better visibility on those channels or how you can offer them additional rates. So the best visibility is coming from, you know, space alongside uh, last minute cancellations and so on and so forth, you know, or, or bundle rates rather than just throwing rates out there, just being more strategic with it and making sure that, you know, for whatever guest is visiting that channel, there's actually a rate there that, that you can compete for that guest from a rate perspective and uh, from a product perspective as well. Yeah, you mentioned that, uh, James, uh, that it's the, one of the biggest challenges, I think, uh, is the multiple guests now that you have, you know, I think a lot of hotels are struggling with that. The, before, if you, your hotel were a majority of international guests and all the suddenly, boom, you have none. And I think, and you correct me if I'm mistaken, but if I'm mistaken, but that will that will change our strategy in terms of also in distribution, right? You were saying that not necessarily, as I, I understood you, right? I think you have to to uh, make it more diverse, maybe, because how yeah, are you gonna, or, you know? Yeah, you know, spread your net a little bit. I mean, so if I looked at the UK market as we are at the moment, like that. Yeah, we don't know one week from the next who's allowed in and who isn't, or who's going to be quarantined and who isn't. So, you know, the vast majority of any hotel travel right now is going to be domestic. Um, previously, hotels who would focus on those business travelers, which just aren't coming at the moment, or um, and then top up the weekends with 
that I have to look and say, okay, how am I now going to fill that hole where I don't have my corporate travel, I don't have events, I'm not, I'm not holding any conventions in my property, or there's no local events going on, or like conventions, exhibitions, that's going to support my uh, my supply and be able to fill my room. What else can I look at? And actually, you know, there's leisure break channels which do a huge amount of domestic for a specific set of hotels, so very niche channels. So you, know, you kind of have to work with a few more to get the same value back, but they tend to work a lot closer if, you know, with, with each individual hotel. Um, but realistically, the, one of the channels that drives, the, well, which is most attractive to the domestic guests is, is your direct channel. So yeah, um, we've I seen- feedback. I agree with you. I mean, a lot of hotels are, and I see a lot of posts and content shared on LinkedIn from hotels. They are all claiming that one positive things, which is not the solution, of course, but the number of uh, revenue, the, the revenue and the number of reservation is doubling. In some cases, even more. Directly. I don't. I don't think. Well, looking at our own data, right? And so we're looking at data across thirty-five thousand, forty thousand hotels worldwide. Um, and we we look at that split between direct and um, indirect. Uh, I wouldn't say the number of reservations are doubling or trebling, but the share of reservations are certainly doubling and trebling in different yeah. regions. And for individual hotels, maybe yeah, they they're actually seeing more than they were this time last year. Very few hotels are seeing more than they were this time last year from any channel. But uh, the direct the share of direct is increasing, and and I consumer research or what have you but um my my personal feeling towards that is and, and Enzo, i think we we're speaking about this the other day um yeah as a traveler as a consumer i'm much more comfortable booking direct in my own country because i know if i have a problem with that reservation i can phone the hotel direct i'm not going to have any language uh, or using the chat, <laughs> or I can use their chat. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I was I was gonna add that, but I was just waiting for my. <laughs> You're waiting for someone to say it first. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I was mean, like, please say chat. it, please say it. <laughs> and and look, don't be afraid to book abroad if they've got instant chat on their website because it'll translate it for you if they're using the right product. But um, you know the um. Yeah, you know, you're 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 a lot less, you're a lot more likely to be able to book direct and and have more confidence in it in in a domestic environment than than abroad. It's so much easier for consumers when they're booking abroad to book through a channel where maybe they you know they already have an account. They don't have it's all translated for them. They don't have mm -hmm. to worry about the website experience because it's exactly the same as what they're always used to. Uh, yeah. So it's more a fall in those reservations, which increases the share of the direct stuff. Uh, yeah, it's plenty of time to 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 capitalize on that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And I think yeah, also I the other side, the traveler will start to have this behavior of feeling more comfortable to connect directly with your hotels. I agree with you that when you travel locally, it's easier to connect direct phone, chat, email, stuff like that. And uh, yeah. But that will behave traveler to move forward in a better, you know, a confident way to book directly. That's the big guess, you know. And on the other hand, are the hotels, especially the independent one, the small one, ready to capitalize, invest, by keep maintaining and growing this part of the revenue, you know, which uh, at the end of the day may may result, you know, in a in a lower cost of acquisition. So no, I mean, it, it, the, the the thing is that the hotel can't get like you can't put you're not going to put all your eggs in one basket. Right? Yeah. I, I expect that's been something I said before. But at the end of the day, the demand is still lower, right? The demand domestically for leisure may have increased, but overall the domestic demand yeah. is probably still lower than it was last year because you take out a massive segment. Yeah, sure. However, the demand that your direct channel will see is probably kick, kicking around, you know, less, certainly, but um, because at the same time now, you know, where you've got furlough schemes running out and people not getting back to work, we're seeing higher levels of unemployment. People actually can't afford to just go and book hotels from a leisure yeah. perspective. So there's a lot more of that concern as well in terms of the demand level. Um, 
but um, <laughs> I think, as I said, the, it, I, I would certainly be very wary about throwing all my marketing costs into, say, Google campaigns for my direct website, certainly if I do my click campaigns, but I would definitely be making sure I'm visible there through Meta. So yeah. you know, if, 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 I'm, if my direct booking is not being shown up in Google's Meta, then that is certainly would be a concern for me if I was a hotelier today. Yeah, well, let me just add something here. Uh, of course, here in Esk Suite, we also see the same, James, as you, you do. It's not that there are more bookings as per se, but the percentage of direct bookings are are getting higher and higher and uh, one thing is because uh, of course people are having a lot of questions right now regarding procedures and and you know all this are they going to be safe at the hotel so they want to go directly to the hotel as well so providing uh, a good customer service is also very uh, key for for uh, for turning this uh, visitor online visitors into into uh, into guests because uh, it, it, it is a great opportunity uh, i think i think you two agree for directing bookings right so and and i know and so you you talk about how um how sometimes hotels they lose uh one dollar or two let's say in this middle uh middle man uh, you know in in, uh, in the reservation so uh and and i know i think hypergas is also focused very much on direct bookings uh, am i right well more than direct booking it's a direct connectivity with a part of the industry which is not very well known and uh, i'm talking about travel providers there are different yeah. segments so traditional travel agents or travel agents part of a consortia uh small middle-sized tour operator local OTA, I'm talking about, you know, if you look at the uh, global revenue from the online market and you move out the three, four large, Expedia, Booking, I don't know, HRS and some other, you move this revenue from those large player, the remaining revenue is coming from those thousand of small players. The problem is that those players are facing right now is, of course, excluded the COVID situation, is the quality of uh, connectivity, the margin and, uh, and information they are passing through, you know, between the travelers and the hotels. So that's where comes, you know, the issue. And when more than say about hyperguest, and this is something I'm trying to push out as a communication message, we are start talking about distribution 2.0 uh because i think from my point of view the current situation in distribution looking at the last 10 years there are three big issues we have to fix um first is the margin of course we know that the customer acquisition cost is increasing and this cannot be sustainable anymore now more than yesterday so by providing you know a new way to sell rooms connecting directly with thousands and thousands of those travel providers will give the opportunity to have a direct connectivity, avoiding those travel providers to pass through different layers of intermediation uh, of middlemen, such as GDS wholesale, for example. Secondly, the, the and I, I, I say sometimes broken integration, and it's actually true. There's a lot of layers when it comes between the last mile travel agent and the hotels, which mean two, three, four, even, you know, middlemen with different technology communicating each other, passing the information of the hotels, rating inventory. And this is really broken the way the, the process works because static contents and passing correct rating inventory are not real, uh, real time updated. So this is an issue um, and we know that. And the third one, the control in distribution of the hotels, we are trying to, you know, to, to, to switch um, so in this way, hotels can decide the policy, terms, condition. They decide at which commission they want to sell to the, the marketplace of hyper guests. And, and on top of this, you know, they can uh, negotiate and establish a direct relationship with each of the travel agents we are onboarding in the marketplace. So that's the way we look at the distribution next. So more margin, direct flat 
and you know fast connectivity and uh, and totally controlling distribution right uh james you want to add something to, to to that and just before you do it just let me say hello here for people from the uk and spain and brazil thank you all for watching us and guys if you have any questions please write on the chat and we will do our best to answer you so yeah james can you would you add yeah something absolutely about yeah. Um, I mean, so so the the piece that Enzo is talking about is the the, the wholesale distribution um, is probably one of the oldest pieces of well, actually the, the GDS piece is one of the oldest is the oldest piece of technology yeah. that's left in in, in our industry um, and yeah it's, it it can be inexpensive in some cases it can be a, a very cost efficient way of driving reservations but your the difference between gds and using a wholesale or an oga for example is that on the gds nobody is marketing you unless you're paying for it up front or unless you're doing it yourself so um, you have to weigh in that cost but if we look at the wholesale piece which uh yeah it's those layers that enzo is talking about there is definitely and i wouldn't go so far as saying it's broken but i think there is a big opportunity there for uh and, and and it's been and as many there's a few tech companies and providers in the market now being one of them uh that are you know looking at this opportunity for hotels to see how can that be handled better and i think one of the uh main advantages of that is is, is mainly maintaining control of your rates and understanding who's getting your rate and at what rate and how they can sell that rate which has been one of the bugbears of the hotel industry over the last few years when uh, they see their hotel advertised cheaper than they than they could ever sell it for and uh you know trying to understand the root cause of that is very difficult when you have all these layers of uh technology platforms that your rate has gone through to end up in this last place so um yeah. but I, I think it's it, there is no quick fix i think you know there there's always a chicken and egg um uh, element here so you know um will buyers move away from wholesalers yes but they when they move away from wholesalers there has to be enough supply to, to wherever they've moved yeah, to fill the gap, yeah, of to, to fill the gap. So, no, 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 yeah. Yeah. and, and then the, the, the supply needs the demand partners those buyers in place before they're going to start seeing value out of those so it's a there is a patience game there's a huge education piece that uh enzo has got on his plate and a few other people in terms of you know this uh type of project but yeah it, it, it's it's going to be an interesting few years but there, this isn't going to be a six month fix uh i, I would yeah. say more james like uh, they, they the hotel should take this opportunity of look at you know an innovation not like replacing what they're currently doing because i will not change especially now whatever you anyone can bring a rooms even a 50 percent commission is fine i mean right now everybody need to fill some rooms uh, the point is, look at the way, for example, when we moved from brochure to the website, you know, uh, at some point hotels were doing both, you know, they have to do both and keep doing the brochure and building the new website because we are in the digital era. So it's not like, okay, I don't print any more brochure, I do only website. You do both. And then you evaluate in a, a long tail, you know, you have to have a first I always say, but this is not only in the our in our industry. I, whatever I'm speaking with an entrepreneur, I always look at people and suggest people to look at things on the middle long terms. Never look at tomorrow, uh, because if it, this is the attitude and the approach, it's very hard to track and measure and, and succeed at the end of the day. So they have to look at the evolution as an opportunity to put on top of what they are currently doing. Uh, they have time to improve the way they've been doing. We always learn from mistake in the past. And uh, if I did some wrong strategy, it's when the revenue manager sitting and preparing the price for next year. I look at the history, I see where I did my mistake, and I've tried to avoid to repeat them again. So, mm -hmm. and that means, you I know, less, less mistake, more margin, more profit, you know. I think one of the pieces from uh, for hoteliers to. Uh, buy into this change in distribution 
would be, uh, for, certainly for me, um, understanding who is going to look after me as a hotelier when these rates are sold or, or when, you know, if, if there's a problem with those reservations. Because going through that wholesale model, right, somebody's on the hook for it, right? And it's your wholesaler because you have contracted them the rooms or you have given them those and, and, and that's there. But there, there's many intermediaries where, you know, they're going saying, okay, we can go direct to the buyers. And so we're missing out these extra layers and you get a you get the reservation for less but when you have a double booking or when a guest doesn't show up or when there's an invalid credit card or when there's um you know any, any other issues with a reservation it's making sure that this isn't just a gateway because otherwise they're dealing with buyers on the other end as opposed to that one person who can look after them and take control of it and if we can get that right as an industry um then i think you know we're, we're, which is difficult because, right, that is just heavy lifting. There, there is a very, there's not an easy way to automate that type of service that you're giving back mm -hmm. to hotels and hotels won't appreciate not speaking to your people. Um, so yeah, there's, there's huge amounts of that jigsaw that over the next few years we're, we're going to be uh, looking to fix. Yeah, uh, well, guys, we have a lot to cover this, and you already mentioned many of the topics, and uh, I just want to dive in a little bit in one uh, one question that it's going on, and a lot of debates about it, and I'm going to put you on the, the hot spot, maybe. But, okay, so how to set the price of the room? You were talking about a little bit, but uh, there are people that say that, well, you should go as low as you can, you know, put the, the rate as low as you can to get the book. And there's some people that defend that, no, you should you should keep your rates at some level. So what are your your thoughts there? Uh, let's start with you, Enzo. Right. That's a big guess. Uh, I think first, uh, there is no unique answer here, no unique solution. There are different factors you have to take in consideration. Uh, it's true that Lowering, lowering the price is not the right way and uh, we know that they might take you know very long time to bring up again your ADR but you cannot you know uh, exclude the reality of the situation where a lot of people especially I'm talking the middle class hotel right not the luxury um, the luxury segment where people used to be rich and they tomorrow will they probably will be more rich so but i'm talking about the middle class people like us normal people traveling every day trying to deal with the room rates uh, if you look at the corporate side if you look at the pleasure side there's less power in the hand of people now uh, for many reasons they lost a job they decreased the business at some point we have to meet these needs now and uh, the truth is that People are still willing to travel because I think travel is coming back stronger, stronger later, but stronger. We cannot avoid people, you know, uh, dreaming and feeling the emotion of traveling. So, but the truth is that some cases, you know, uh, the economic situation is not that great. People are still willing to travel. Maybe they have less power. So we have to we have to take in consideration the truth. And uh, but let's keep you know open the eyes. I think more than ever. Hotels in the same destination, they should work more, you know, uh, in a way of uh, competition, uh, not competing. They should have, you know, more control on the rates because, you know, so far the jungle of price in a destination, it's very, doesn't have any sense. I mean, if there is some hotel selling a 50 euro and on the other hand, there is 100 euro hotel, same standard. So... I think this type of large gap in the pricing difference should not be the same anymore. Uh, but it's also true that when you set up the price, you cannot use the history anymore. You have to start from bottom zero, you know, bottom line. You have no history uh, reference uh, unless you go back 2009, 2009, 2008 when we had a crisis. But I think now hotels should have should be more talking to each other understanding that going down with price too much doesn't have any sense, doesn't make any demands, uh, additional demand. Uh, but at some point, in some case, they have to meet traveler needs. 
they have less money to travel now they want to keep travel so less meet their needs but not lower too much so it's a really a balance a very del uh, borderline you know situation here yeah yeah what I about you that, james i think you have to go further back i don't think anyone's there is uh, unprecedented is 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 overused but i mean there are hotels if you go back to 2001 from 9 11 like new york was empty for a good few months afterwards but you know that that's a very different scenario there isn't one you can match uh in terms of you know um talking with your local competitors and hotels and that just sounds like price fixing which which i don't think um is is the route to go uh but understanding your local competitors and local market and what's going on in the market is is hugely important and rate you know I, yeah. I i certainly encourage using rate shopping um and you know we gave uh, an element of rate shopping away for free to a whole bunch of to any of our customers that's using the direct booking tool um enabling to check their parity initially but you can you can add rate shopping to that very easily on, on any of our platforms it, it's something that right now understanding what the market is doing you have to still take into consideration the value of your product because as we've seen if you go back to 2008 2009 in, in the uh, global financial crisis uh yeah occupancy recovered in a couple of years but uh adr took another two three years after that to recover to the, the uh, levels that we were at prior to that and um yeah as much as we don't want to take that long to recover i think realistically um you know we're not going to see occupancy back to pre-covid until sort of 2022 um at the earliest and you know i, I think that adr is going to come behind that so uh, don't be afraid to be competitive with your prices i would would be my recommendation but do keep in mind that um, you know it's it's a lot easier to go down than it is to bring them back up again. Um, one of the issues we see certainly over this side of the world in Europe, and you know I have friends of mine who aren't necessarily in the industry speaking to me and, and trying to understand it, and uh, I can't help them either. Is that why can I fly to Italy and spend ten days there for five hundred quid, and I can't spend five days in a hotel? um yeah. two, uh, two hours from my house for 500 yeah. quid you know what is the what is the difference and and it's a very hard one so there is that value perception when you're looking at domestic tourism to really consider like domestically people are used to getting quite a lot of bang for their buck traveling around europe um but not so much in your own country certainly not in the uk yeah and uh just to add sorry sorry Enzo, uh just to add something about the 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 difference right between price and value that it's we were talking about here we do have a question uh from nizar and Nizar, sorry if i said i said it wrong your name i hope i did it a good job uh, uh so they ask you guys would you think it is a good idea to increase the number of guests locally by providing more hot deals like stay three nights and pay two instead of going so low on price which we use it to, to we used to do it in dubai uh i would and say so, uh, yeah sorry, okay, I, I, I would just say look promotions are great as long as you can afford them so look, as long as it's not devaluing the product too much it's great that that additional night um but they're only as good as the visibility you get them so it's about where you make those promotions available um you know yeah the vast majority of um demand is seen still through you know the major distribution channels they have promotions available that i would certainly encourage people if you're looking to do promotions across your direct channel or um you know over voice then certainly make sure you're extending those promotions across the channels which realistically see the most guests because if nothing else is gonna you you have to make sure you're promotions are in parity with your direct website as much as your rates are in parity because if they see that promotion online 
in, in one place, they're going to expect to see it in the other. So you don't want to lose direct business that's being referred from a, an OTA because you haven't got parity across. And likewise, you don't want to miss out on the opportunity of getting that reservation because you, know, you haven't applied that promo in the right place. Right. And Enzo, please, sorry, I interrupted you before. So could you please just... I think, um, right. So it's not only about, you know, well, price and value is the key. We know that. Um, but I think it's all about also creativity here. No, Don't, let's not forget that we are in the hospitality industry, in the travel industry. We should all be, you know, uh, balanced between uh, being a very good analytics people, but also creative in the way you sell, because otherwise it's becoming all about numbers and travelers, on the other hand, they take other, you know, factor in consideration. Uh, for example, uh, especially when you want to create more opportunity at domestic level, local level, and I'm not talking about only leisure segment, but also business. And uh, this is also a trend that is growing in the last five years. For example, uh, guesting local, you know, uh, citizen in your hotel, mm -hmm. because maybe you are providing a nice uh, rooftop, uh, you are providing a nice bars and restaurant, and most of most importantly, that's what I do. Not honestly, when I try, when I stay in Barcelona and I have a meeting around, I try to you know book a space in an hotel. And uh, but sometimes I, you don't need to have a mice or a meeting rooms to you know to rent. You just need to create the right package, give it the right space, connectivity, access to the buffet, the drinks, the coffee. Depends on the time of the day, if it's a, a brunch time or a dinner time or a preventive time, try to provide, you know, also different way to sell your space, not only rooms. A lot of hotels now are adopting the rooms like a, a local office, for example. Imagine you are traveling, um, I'm traveling to London uh, and I have a flight connection or I have a meeting and I have to leave again the day after, whatever. And I need a space to sit, meet people, look at my emails, and have a time to have a drink and refreshed and uh, relax and uh, eating something. I think about this type of needs now in the traveler. So when you sell, you don't sell only a unit here, rooms, 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 rooms. You sell time and space now, no? So look at the look at the property not only from the units, uh, number of rooms point of view, but also from the uh, square meters, the space. So a lot of people now start to talk about revenue, um, revenue per space per meter, per meter square, no more for room type, you know, uh, because you you have a lot of space in your hotel. How do you fill this space? How do you sell your space? How do you incentivize your local citizen to come at your hotel, do these meetings at your hotel, having the opportunity to access a breakfast and having one hour uh, rooms for a shower, uh, reply couple email for 50 bucks you know so there is a lot of new way you 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 have to improve and trying to gain some revenue from yeah. local markets so again it's about setting the right price but also being able to you know have a creativity in the way you want to make revenue yeah to optimize the revenue right because uh, i think your hotels might be missing you're totally right some good opportunities and guys I have another question here uh, hello, Fernando from Cancun. Thank you for insights. Thank you, Fernando, for watching us. Okay, so I'm a, I'm in at uh, all-inclusive resort where the market segment mixes has a good portion of everything, mice, direct, OTAs, and so on. And I'm wondering who is or should be the owner of the client's information, the resort which the which the client chose chose, or the provider that's taking the clients to the resort. For me, being able to own the information of the client and being able to contact them is crucial for reducing future marketing efforts. Gracias. Thank you, Fernando. Gracias. So, uh, who wants to go first? <laughs> uh, I'm the, I, I can be really quick on that one. Um, okay. <laughs> you should um, look. It, an, an OTA or someone is going to say that they own the client because they sourced it. You're going to say you, you, you should own the client because they're staying at your property. The truth is, as soon as you have that reservation, the sooner you can open up that conversation with that uh, guest, either you know prior to them arriving or on arrival, then you can own that. You, can, you, you need to make sure it's your 
duty to own that guest effectively so that you know you are able to market to them the next time a um, couple of things i'd say so as, as a channel manager siteminder if you if you have a look at the hotel app store um on siteminder we integrate to the channel manager actually integrates to about a hundred different applications there's applications on there that do upsell that do uh, crm which means as soon as those reservations are coming into the channel manager it's automatically pumping out into another platform which is automatically starting that relationship with that guest for you whether it's like hey you just booked a standard room on booking.com did you want to upgrade that to this or did you want to add this into your room or something else or even integrating with chatbots that we do so that you know they already know the guest and they can reach out to that guest already for you so the the, the truth is it's um it's your responsibility to take ownership of the guest. No one's going to give it to you. Yeah. Before Enzo, you add to this. I I read once, and I'm not sure if it was the CEO of a, uh, it was the CEO from a big chain uh, hotel chain, and he said, "I don't mind paying commission for the OTA for the first time. I do mind for the second time because, like you said, it, you have to create this loyalty bound bond. You know, you have to create this relationship." So in the future, uh, they come directly to you and not through a third part. And Enzo, can you uh, also add something to, to that uh, for Fernando's question? From my point of view, everything should be back to basic. Like uh, when I, in, back in 2000, I think 2001, I was working in a hotel. I was on, actually owning the control of OTA manually. The site manager was not there yet. <laughs> I was updating written inventory really manually. But the good part of this <laughs> is that any reservation, including booking, I don't remember Expedia, but hotels.com, yes, I was handling the information, including the mail of the traveler. So I think the, the, the reason why this is not possible anymore is because someone did some bad practice uh, and the OTA, they you know uh, hide the contact information. And I think this is a big mistake. It's true that they were losing a lot of business because hoteliers were you know contacting the hotel, uh, the traveler saying that cancel the reservation next week, they book directly, and I give you also 5% discount, some, stuff like that. That's a bad practice. But at, at some point, I think the OTA should have uh, shared this information. They will sh share this information again in make sure that people are handling the information of the travel since the first moment right now because there is a lot of you know protocol and uh, and friction you know during the travel process now and i think if the hotel are able to contact directly the travel the final travel wherever is booking tra is booking from it would be a really crucial part and uh, yeah definitely yeah uh we've seen in the next at a suite we we do have like 1300 hotels around the road and many of them have problems with cancellations through a third part because the guest would of course complain directly to the hotel and then well but uh, you made the reservation through ota and then it was yeah uh i, th I think anyone that works in a, in a hotel knows that <laughs> experience and can relate to that uh that you want the direct contact and direct um you can directly approach the person and talk and, and solve things because you know the guest the client doesn't it don't matter who who did what they just want things to be done right yeah so, yeah. yeah and uh and so you said that you did it manually i also did this and i was like overbooking oh my god i forgot to close something you know so <laughs> and <laughs> yeah i totally relate to that too and then i want to go back to to James about technology, of course, uh, we all here work with uh, Hot Text, and especially now because uh, there are, unfortunately, a lot of people lost their jobs. Hotels are uh, had to downsize, and it's basically impossible to have someone just checking the price. You said James mentioned to know the local market. If you're gonna do it like on your own without technology, it's uh, you, you won't do it, you know. Yeah. So yeah, do do you see that uh, that uh, that's a good possibility and, and, a, and a good way to to invest uh, money in hotel technology right now, uh, especially in this. I, I think anything uh, with certainly you know, our business. I know a lot of other tech businesses, um, not just but otherwise, using this time to really focus on automation. So make to you know take the 
uh, the the element of human error out of it, or at least that out of it. So that, you know, giving time back to other people to be a lot more strategic, and then we've done that a lot within our own business. And I think that translates exactly to hotels. Like, if you lose people, you need to automate their tasks. Like, you know, you didn't employ them for fun. Uh, you know, they had a function and a role. So if you're not, you know, if, if you've got a channel manager, but it's not integrated to your PMS, right, that is an investment. You are paying one person, you know, $1,000 a month. You could just pay $100 a month and just integrate to the PMS, for example, is, is just one example. Or if you don't have a channel manager at all, or consider... Uh, a revenue management system plugged into your channel manager. When I was in hotels, one of my, God, this is going back a long way, by the way, but um, one of the things we did on, on our reception, first day in the first in the morning and last thing at night was rape shopping. We rang around every local hotel and yeah. we said, hey, what, what's your last available rate today? Yeah. What's your best available rate today? Uh, I morning did that. and night, yeah. Um, <laughs> Jesus, we're, we're employing people to do this. Get a rate shopper, right? And they'll give you a lot better data than what we could have got from over the phone, right? We didn't even yeah. have the option to go to their website at that point. Um, <laughs> but I'm still only 21. Um, <laughs> then, you know, um, so, so yeah, absolutely. Um, and, you know, every reservation you get is data, and data is one of your greatest uh, assets in any business. So, you know, make sure it's not just rotting in a PMS and going stale. Um, you know, if you have the ability to get that data out from your PMS, from your channel manager into a platform that's going to be able to make use of it, be it custom CRM platform, even, you know, chatbot, guest communication tools, um, upsell platforms, then it's absolutely key that you're not wasting one of those greatest assets of a business. Yeah, I think you 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 touch a point that it's also very important not only in technology because here we also uh, of course believe that uh, humans should do valuable tasks and strategic tasks and not operational one like like set minor uh, uh, also things and uh, but the integration of course because if it's allow like a chatbot for example uh, if it's not integrated with the booking engine then you're losing it you know and then it's it's not um it's not giving you back as much as 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 it could be as an investment uh so what's your thoughts about that enzo can you uh, add something for, for that the technology use in the hotel industry which is still uh, is still yeah, behind issue, if you compare let me tell you, the issue is in the two side eh? some re uh, reluctancy from hotels they are still you know uh, stack in uh, traditional, uh, they are very conservative in terms of uh, <laughs> put money on the table. Yeah. But let me that there are a lot of it's really not because James is there. I am really a big fan of SiteMinder, and if it's the largest channel manager providing providers, there's a reason there. But the truth is that there are a lot of um, technology provider out there claiming innovation. But when it comes to the, the integration process, because it, at some point hotels, some years ago they had an issue to 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 decide or not to move in digital or adopting technology. Now the problem is a is a different. They have a, a huge number of provider, and they don't know which one to choose. And the problem is that all of those players, small, middle one, they are not very properly integrated in each other. And if they do so, they ask money or they do this in a very slow time and very, that, that's when I say in a provoking, I say broken integration also, you know, uh, James. Innovation sometimes doesn't match with the right, the reality in some travel tech. So it's true that hotels sometimes are really, you know, uh, I think that the largest part in the, the, the hotels are not using a, a channel manager yet. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, James, right? So, um, <laughs> look, we, we guess that there is, you know, probably upwards of 800,000 hotels in the world. And if you start throwing in vacation rentals and the sort of pop up hotels in the sort of apart service department kind of space, yeah. which are kind of hybridish, then it's probably higher than that. Like, you know, as, as the largest channel manager, we have 35 plus thousand hotels. So, that, yeah, so there's a hovering percent, percent. So, it's true that the largest Maybe, part. Maybe five percent. So, so I would say, look, there is, yeah, there is a huge gap of hotels that aren't necessarily using distribution today. 
um, or you know they're, they're certainly using distribution in a sense but they're doing it very manually uh, which for me is always surprising <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's I mean, unless you have a small property or a property in a secondary destination that works very low with online markets, and you are I could still find a good reason and a good return to use. Uh, but you know, yeah. it's, uh, it's for me unacceptable this situation, and more more than uh, more than the hotel side, it's not acceptable anymore from the travel tech provider that are still, you know, claiming innovation, but on the other hand, are you know. Mm. Oh, there's, there's channels, and, and, and I think maybe you guys might be included as one of them, that, that won't work with someone if they're not going through distribution, if they're not plugged in through an API. I can't work with this hotel because they don't have a technology provider pushing me the ARI. I don't want, you know, this is, the channels don't want hotels to be logging in and giving manual race and inventory because again, you know, you're relying on that human factor, which uh, yeah. you know, is... is okay pretty unreliable in most cases when it comes to that yeah okay so guys uh we are fortunately heading to the end but i don't want to 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 finish before first of all uh as uh, giving you the question here I have some other questions that are popping up here uh maria angela hello thank you all for the tips and the sites and thank you maria angela for watching us uh would you say the voice channel is gone for good and how much value can customer servers add to distribution? Okay, uh, voice, we want to go. The voice, over, the, the voice uh, let's say, little device like Google Home, Amazon, these kind of things. She's no, I think I think we're talking about voices in the reservations desk, like you and I used to do. Yeah, um, <laughs> like calling, which, right? Yeah, but I'm and so actually interestingly, I can't remember which group it was, but there was a group in the UK that's through through this current process has actually seen um, an increase, like a huge increase in the number of calls they're getting to their central reservations office for reservations. Uh, and look, what, James? that's the English domestic market for you. There you go. Yeah. I mean, it could be the same. I'm sure it's the same in other countries. Yeah, yeah, but let me tell you something. And this is the worst part of our industry. Nine times up to ten, I call a hotel trying to book directly, but I'm talking before okay. COVID. Nine times out of ten, the price was higher. Yeah, so I have that too. If this yeah. part of the reservation yeah. segment is going to die, it's definitely the fault of hotelier. <laughs> yeah. yeah well yes exactly hey i've just I seen your hotel. how many times did you try to fall uh, again i want to book uh, you yeah i've, I've yeah, nearly I given up i love you given up yeah yeah uh, I, I think i can i can add something for that since we are really focused on customer service and we see of course well first of all like you all said uh we're not gonna wait in line for get a, someone to answer your your question or whatever uh, we're not probably not gonna call uh, to another country when everybody is doing text messaging right now. So yeah, uh, customer service, uh, it's a, a huge part offering customer service uh, instantly customer service when someone is there looking for a website or or in the heat of the moment, you know, trying to to, to book a room it's 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 key especially for of course direct bookings so yeah i think at, at least i can see from our our clients here um phone calls are dropping uh, a lot and it's, it's still more emails and text messaging uh, for sure at least from our experience here yep uh, okay, so we have another uh, last one because uh, really it's uh, it's really ending. <laughs> Sorry, uh, João is asking here. Hey, it's just difficult to understand why some book engine systems are asking money for integrations with upselling platforms, guest communication platforms, chatbots. I think we mentioned that a little bit, but which at the end is always increasing the price for the hotel. Okay, who wants to get that one? <laughs> I honestly, if, if we're talking about charging the hotels, um, you know, in, and, and certainly if you looked at our own strategy and that, um, 
certainly through like if we look at the channel manager and and, and our app store you know there's 40 50 or 100 apps in the in the app store that can plug into the channel manager to add value to that um you know as a provider that's part of us so you know that the the value we get out of that is being able to provide additional connections so in terms of making that customer stickier so it, it, if, if you look at some of the more um legacy type uh, technology providers so I'm talking about pmss yes cost of integration is often a very high factor into why the adoption of technology is very low in our industry and i totally agree that that is something that we need to try and break down as much as possible um and that yeah. hoteliers should be able to make use of those integrations um if it's costing a provider realistically a huge amount of money or some money and they're not getting any value back they can't see any value back from it fine. but for me it's customer satisfaction and you know adding value onto your product through someone else yeah. through through a partner is yeah. should be the value that we're looking to get yeah i totally agree we we do strive here to more and more to be more integrated with other you know other companies and other tools because at the end, like you said, it's to add value for hoteliers, for the hotels, our clients. So, yeah. And Enzo, one, you want to say something about that? <laughs> uh, let's ask anything? the right party. Whoever is asking integration, uh, cost. Yeah. There is some little development process. But I would say, uh, unless, you know, you go with the very right price in the right time, that's fine. But if we ask about thousand for waiting six months, say something doesn't work. And uh, in the air again, we are still stuck in uh, in uh, old uh, fish on uh, distribution approach. And uh, that's why we're here with Hypercast in particular. So avoiding this kind of, uh, you know, friction. Yeah giving a sustainable way to to distribute but especially you know build the new distribution landscape so yeah yeah like you said before enzo and uh, thoroughly it's not only innovation per se but innovation with uh, with value and with uh, integration and that actually works right uh, Definitely. well guys yeah, if yeah you go to apple store and you want to download an app how long does it take yeah. For me, in general, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> if I that for me, innovation is you go in the marketplace, I want this CRM on my site minder, done yeah. like the way I do on Apple Store. If I go on Apple Store, I want to download an app, yeah, seconds. that would be, I mean, look, and, and I'll be the first person to say it's not as quick as Apple. But um, you know, we of can course, get us. We can get a CRM connected in in you know in, in twenty four hours. But yeah. that that's Which the sense. You know, we are not in the Apple uh, industry. It's a different concept. Yeah. But the way it should be. This is the attitude for me. That's the right attitude. Okay, guys. Uh, well, we we are actually at the end of the show. I think we we managed to to give some. A great insights about this new distribution game that it's shaping right now so i would like to thank you both uh my um, guest uh it was a great pleasure having you here great conversation uh enzo uh thank you for thank you so much for joining us and is there any final message or information or maybe contact information you want to leave for the audience yeah well i mean if you want to get in touch to discover more about hyperguest uh, which is really disrupting the industry right now from my point of view just get in touch with me uh on linkedin and swaita send me a private message and i will follow up immediately like uh, apple store you click send a message <laughs> that was no great i <laughs> not ask you money for that <laughs> <laughs> great and james you too thank you so much for joining us today and uh, for all your your tips and insights and also, is there any, any yeah, final message or any contact information? Well, likewise, look, I'm more than happy to be contacted on LinkedIn. But if you're looking for local market information uh, that's going to support you now, um, 
you can check out our website. We have the uh, SiteMinder World Hotel Index on there, which is actually showing percentage of reservations by market sort of year on year at the moment and some other factors around um, domestic versus international and the booking lead time and so on that we're seeing through our platform into your region. Um, so I tell you what, before we close the chat, I can just drop the link in there. But also, um, no, if you speak to one of the local SiteMinder representatives, they can all help you in terms of understanding local market data and so on. And if they have any questions, they'll, they'll only ask me anyway. So. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, if you have anyone also are interested in uh, customer service, automated customer service and integrations that we said uh, with Booking Engines and so on, just go to asksuite.com and find out more about our chatbot and platform. So thank you so much, everybody. Thank you for watching us and let's see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye now. Bye, guys. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thanks.